And as you can see, just from sitting, we have oil in the floor. So I gotta clean that up. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Jacanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Do not go anywhere because today I am going over one of the most common questions I get asked at the shop. Why does my chainsaw leak so much bar oil? But before we get into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I will reply to all the early commenters. So, it never fails. If you haven't got something stuffed in the bottom of your chainsaw case, it's probably full of bar oil. Like literally every chainsaw box I open. Look at all that bar oil. And this saw has barely been used. This is my chainsaw shelf. Every single shelf is full of, you guessed it, bar oil. There's my other chainsaw shelf. And it's full of bar oil. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is come over to the corner of my garage here where I've had this steel sitting for probably about six months. And I am in a heated and cooled garage, so <clears throat> that should have no effect on this chainsaw, the reason that it's leaking. I actually have not ran this chainsaw um, at all in, in forever. I used it for some of my videos and did not run it and then sat it back down here. And as you can see, just from sitting, we have oil in the floor. So I gotta clean that up. So this is a saw I'm definitely going to be making a video on in the future about how to fix the oiler because obviously something is up with it. The entire bottom end of it is moist from bar oil. I really wanted to bring this one over to show about the caps, but to find out where this is leaking from because it's it's from one end all the way to the other, from the front to the back, from where it's been sitting, but it's also up in these cavities here. It's, it's very moist uh, too, but the only place it doesn't have any bar oil coming out of it is the actual oil reservoir, right? You know, the tube right here where it should. Even right here, there's a little bit of of oil so this thing might be leaking all over the place I don't know we're gonna have to check that later now what I really wanted to show you was these steel flip top toolless caps that they've come out with and they've been putting them on there forever and they are one of the most common uh, gas and oil caps that I sell at the shop why because they're just not made to last very long and people have a hard time putting them in and out with the notches and they split and they will leak all the time on you. So that's the first thing to check. Um, if you feel like you're losing bar oil, clean everything up real good, um, fill it up, put the chainsaw sitting flat on, <clears throat> on the bottom and go ahead and, and put a paper towel underneath and see if it's leaking from there because that is one of the most common issues I see. So if I would have known that my chainsaw was leaking like that, I probably would have used it for this demonstration, but I didn't at the time. So I brought home a customer's Husqvarna chainsaw that um, immediately, the second you pour oil in it, it starts dripping out. So I see this a lot with the Husqvarnas and the Poolands. They are the worst leakers that come into the shop. And a lot of times it, there's nothing wrong with the machine. It's just leaking through. So we're gonna go over this one today. I have it, I have it here in a bag because it is a super leaker and we're just going to diagnose, see what we can find and hopefully fix the issue. Now through this process, I'm also doing an experiment. I have not done this in my previous videos. Usually I sit down here, I sit at the shop, I make a video, I edit it, I post it. This one I've taken days to do. I went ahead and I bought a couple different kinds of bar oil and I was trying them out in my chainsaws, my MS440 steel chainsaw and my uh, CS590 Timberwolf and I let them get hot and I would run them, you know, sporadically revving them up, getting them to a, a good temperature and then I would let them sit to see how much bar oil they leaked out. And to tell you the truth, my findings were a little bit odd. Now, why were they odd? Well, because my chainsaws do not usually leak. I keep them in a heated and cooled garage. I don't have them in a box. They 
just don't ever leak. I use them. They sit out for a little bit to, you know, release that residual oil that could be, you know, stuck to the inside of the um, clutch cover. And then when I bring them inside, they pretty much sit there for months and I never have a puddle underneath them. So I really thought both of these saws would be really good for this experiment because one was pretty brand new and one was super old and maybe I could tell a difference and the uh, results will shock you. So for this demonstration, I broke out my Echo CS590 Timberwolf chainsaw, which is pretty much brand new. It's barely been used. Then I got my old bad boy steel MS440 Magnum chainsaw. Both of them have a 20 inch bar on it. We're going to go ahead and put the DG bar and chain oil inside. I'm going to run them both for about five minutes and every minute or so I'm going to rev it up and point the tip of the nose towards the cardboard so we can see what kind of streams coming off of that. And then I'm just going to let them sit overnight and see how much they leak. So I'm starting off with a clean slate of cardboard here. I'm going to start these bad boys up and we're going to see what kind of streams coming out of them. So we can see that both of them got a pretty good stream coming off them. We know that oil is reaching the tip of the bar and slinging off the end. So both of them are oiling correctly. Now I'm going to let them run for about five minutes, throttling them up periodically throughout it, getting them warmed up and uh, see if they leak after. So after running for four or five minutes with those intervals of revving it up, we can see quite a large pile of bar oil and goo that came out of the 44. And let's see what came out of the uh, 590. A little runnier just because it probably didn't have as much built up around the sprocket of goo to mix in with. but. Let's take note of how much actually came out the back end while it was running instead of making it to the tip of the bar also. So that might be something interesting. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and set them both on a paper towel. I'm gonna wipe them clean first and then I'm going to set them on a paper towel overnight and see how much leaks out. We're just gonna leave it just like that overnight. Now there are a few things that I noticed right off the bat when I look at this chainsaw. The actual body of it, all the plastic is, is pretty brand new looking. I mean, it looks barely used, but check out this bar. On top of this burniness right here, which just was obviously turned over on the bottom and flipped around, the chain's on backwards and uh, it looks like it was road hard and put up wet. So let's take this clutch cover off and see what it looks like behind there. A 
Well, for as much bar oil as this thing's been leaking out of it, this little reservoir right here where it's actually supposed to come out looks extremely dry. So when a bar comes in looking like this with this dark line on the bottom, sometimes it's even blue, that means this bar has gotten way too hot, that it is not getting the oil to it efficiently or they ran out of bar oil, something. But at some point, this bar got extremely hot. So next we're gonna go ahead and check that there's bar oil actually in it because it's not leaking at the moment. It might all leaked out and we're not gonna be able to find a leak if it has nothing inside. So um, hold the front door. The second I put it on its side, it starts leaking like a sieve. It barely has any bar oil in it. But I don't know if y'all can see that. It's sort of blurry from here. I can't get it to focus in on, on that. The oil line is actually come unattached from whatever that little nipple is down there to, that it goes on. Ugh. I can't get it to, to show it very well. But as you can see, right where my flashlight is, there is a little nipple and that grommet has poked out. I think we found our problem. That was quick. So looking from this side, as you can see, the actual little channel here is dry as a bone. It is coming out somewhere underneath this plate. Maybe the line goes through back there. We're going to take this off and uh, see what's going on back there. All right, so it's been over 90 degrees here in Arkansas, and we're going to see how much these leaks sitting overnight. You're going to be sort of surprised. Oh, under the 590, check that out. That is quite a little puddle there. Let's look at MS440, and it's about the same. Lots of bar oil, so. Let's run another test. All right, so I want to get behind this plate to see what's going on. There's a little prong here held against the bar stud that actually keeps it in place. So I'm going to bend that up and remove this plate. Check this out. So this might be hopefully a super easy fix. As you can see right here, it's got a little 90 that uh, obviously sucks the bar oil up through here, goes into the pump and then pumps it to the bar, which is obviously has not been getting the oil it needs at all. So let's uh, take this 90 out and see what's going on behind here. All right, let's take this out. See what's behind here. And there is that grommet that has fallen out. Let me get a flashlight on it so you can see that. Check it out. The grommet is supposed to be perfectly set in that little hole and it is pushed through. So maybe that's all our problem. Let's see. So it's been a couple days since I did my last test. I poured all of the Dollar General bar oil out of these chainsaws and I'm gonna put the Echo in and run the same test. Let them sit and see what they do. Now, because the oiler works on how many revs per minute that the engine is actually running, I made sure that when I did the first test and the second test, I revved both of them at the same time on both tests about every 10 seconds. So let's see what kind of mess we have here. Now, I did notice that the oil coming off the tip of the bars was much cleaner, but that really is just because I have not used these saws since 
um, the first test and the first test, they both had a lot of gunky in them. So you can't really attribute that to anything. Now we're going to remove this one. I'm going to say that's a lot less oil than we saw on the last one. Let's see. On the Echo. Yeah, that's a lot less. Now it looks looks like a lot on the camera, but actually it is way, way less. Like, let me put my finger next to that. That's not as much oil that came out of the other uh, test at all. So, already I think uh, the Echo brand has a head. So as before, we got about a 90 degree day tomorrow. So I'm going to lay out some paper towels, set them on there and let them hang out all day. See how much they leak. All right, we're all set. So thankfully a small piece of the grommet is still on this side because getting it through is probably not a fun one. So, oh, it's not gonna be fun getting it out. I hope I don't rip it. Cause we really need to get it back through here. And I do not want it to fall into the oil tank. Hmm. Maybe I should go in from the inside and see if I can do some pushing through. I'm gonna try to press it through. Oh, it totally just popped right back in. Sweet, let me show you. So I barely had to push it with my flathead and it popped right back into place. So that's pretty awesome. Let's look at it from the other side. So yeah. It went right back into its little slot there. And when we put that 90 um, plastic piece back in, we're gonna make sure that it's real snug and not squish it back into the hole. And hopefully that fixed our problem. So I really didn't know it was gonna be that easy to fix, or I probably would have found something a little harder to do a video on, but thankfully for the customer, this one's gonna save them a lot of time, money, and frustration now for sure, and a mess. So I'm gonna put my little side plate back on, I'm gonna fill it up with bar oil, and we're gonna see if it leaks. Now, the main thing about it is, is you've just gotta find where the leak's coming from. So you have to clean the entire saw off, fill it up with bar oil, and watch it. All right, so I've left these chainsaws sit for about a day and a half, and it was about 86 degrees Fahrenheit here in Arkansas today, so it was sweltering. So let's see how much they leaked. All right, under the MS-440. We got quite a puddle going on there. I'm not sure if it's as much as the DG brand, but still, that's a lot of oil. Next, let's check out the Timberwolf. Not as bad as the DG brand, but still, it leaks. We're just gonna top it off here. It is full. All right, I think we're pretty successful. This thing hasn't leaked at all. I've been letting it sit here a few minutes, turning it on its side. Remember last time it was just pouring out very quickly. Now nothing's coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and run it and make sure it is coming out the reservoir and make sure it's working correctly. coming out the channel like it's supposed to. It's not running out the bottom. That is a very good sign, and I think she's good. So what did my experiment prove? It proved that all chainsaws are going to leak a little bit. Why? Because while they're running, they're throwing tons of bar oil up into the clutch cover around the sprocket, and it's just, as you saw, creating a huge puddle as it's sitting there. So there's still a bunch of residual oil stuck up in there when you leave it back in your case when you're done with it or you set it in your garage. Depending on temperature too, if it's hot in that area, it's going to all fall down and it's gonna leave a puddle. Now, if it's excessive, 
then you know you have an issue somewhere like this one and you need to find it by cleaning the entire saw off, filling it up with bar oil, setting it on a paper towel and finding out exactly where that leak's coming from. Like on the steels, you can see if it's coming from the cap area. Some of the steels have a vent behind the muffler for the bar oil tank. If it's coming from underneath your clutch cover area, you'll want to see if it's actually coming out the reservoir where it's supposed to. And that's just, you know, that you rather it be oiling than not oiling at all. So that that's not as big of an issue as coming out somewhere where it's not supposed to. Um, some of the steels have an oil line traveling up underneath the saw. You need to check that one. Um, but really though, the majority of saws are not leaking where they're not supposed to. They're leaking out of areas where, you know, it's just gonna come out anyways. The majority of customers who think they have a oil leaking issue, it's really just that residual oil and not an issue with the chainsaw. So like I said, if you want to make sure there is no oil at all after you're done using it, you're gonna have to remove the clutch cover, clean that entire area up. I would even suggest maybe putting it back into the, you know, bottle that you got it in and then you won't have any oil leaking anywhere. But other than that, all chainsaws leak. So hopefully this video saves you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find us at Instagram at the real chicanic or find us at chicanic.com where you can get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks and have a great day.